Hi. It's really an honor to meet you. Sure, that'll be great. Thank you. It's good. It's healthy. It's chicken. It's well wheat. Okay. Low fat cheese. Wow. Well, yeah. Thank you. It's getting a little cold. You're one of the few people on the planet who just consistently inspires me. Oh, and thank you for saying that. Thank you. No, it means a lot to hear that because I take so much abuse to say, to say something nice. I really appreciate it. Well, I was just wondering who who inspires you. What inspires you now? Well, that's a good question. Mm. You mean other than Naomi, Naomi Klein? Mm-hmm. I've been really inspired since November fourth. That really lifted my spirits. I went through eight years of, of hell. I went through it personally, and the country went through it, and the world went through it. So, <clears throat> I remain hopeful with Obama in the White House. Were you at all inspired by the take on this when you mentioned Naomi Klein? Because that was the only movie that I could think of that, that even came close to going into this territory. I just think that there are good people like her who are saying and doing good things, good, good, good work. And the more, the better. Where do you feel you're having the most political impact? Hmm. I'm a filmmaker. I'm a, I don't use the word political activist because I, I think it's redundant. If I say that if I'm a citizen of a democracy, it means automatically I'm a political activist. I have to be. All of us have to be. If we're not active, it ceases to be a democracy. So, but I love the movies. Maybe that's a selfish way to look at it. Maybe television has more impact, okay. but I don't think so. I think the movies do. TV may reach more people, but it's so, you know, in the moment and then it's gone. <clears throat> movies, I think, last longer. Movies require active participation. Television is a passive activity. You're sitting there on the couch. You're doing other things. Okay. Movies, you have to leave the house. you got to get a babysitter. you got to spend money. you got to commit. you got to commit. Then you got to go sit in the dark room with a bunch of strangers, and you got to have a communal experience that television doesn't give you. So the chance of action, political action, happening out of the movie theater, out of those who see it in the theater, is far greater than perhaps those who see it at home. Do you think the movies also provoke more conversation? Because when you make a movie, it's not just that you do the regular press junket; you become you've been becoming part of the national dialogue in the U.S. Mm -hmm. on pretty much every movie you've done. Yes, I believe that's true. I believe. To be on TV now is to be to have a show on one of 200 channels. It's almost like being at the Toronto Film Festival, the movie. I mean, you're one movie out of 335 movies. When people see this movie, what do you hope the reaction is going to be? What do you look for? A number of things. I hope that the average American will quit thinking that they're going to achieve the American dream, that they too will be rich someday. That's just not going to happen. I would hope that people get involved, become active, join an organization, uh, run for office themselves, any of a number of things. Um, at the very least, quit participating in the system. Don't buy shares of stock. Put your money in a credit union. Only use credit cards where you have to pay at the end of the month. Don't put your pension in the stock market, for Christ's sake. You know? <clears throat> things yep. like that. How do you deal with the anger that you inspire from some people? Because it kind of blows my mind. Oh. I mean, the fact that like Fox News thinks you're public enemy number one, um, and the fact that lots of people seem to watch Fox News. And I mean, yeah. I'm, I saw Colbert before I saw Fox News, and then I saw Fox News and thought they were kind of like him. So it stuns me, like watching the town halls and going, people are bringing guns and people were arrested for wearing nasty t-shirts to see George Bush, but people are okay bringing automatic weapons to see Obama. How do you deal with that level of crazy? I have a lot of security. <laughs> They're out in the hall right now. Okay. Does it ever scare you? You know, I've lived a good life. I've, done, I've accomplished things I wanted. I never thought I'd be able to do. I raised a good kid. So I don't think too much about him. Just keep moving on. Well, there was an interesting comment that I, I read a few places that you made this movie as if it was your last film. Mm -hmm. Was that because of the subject matter? Like, What made this one particularly special like that? 
I just got to thinking, it's been 20 years since I made Roger and me. I'm still talking about General Motors. I get, now it's bankrupt. I think that very thing I warned about. Yeah. You know, I, I told people there weren't weapons of mass destruction. We shouldn't win to Iraq. Yeah. And I go back over all these movies, these things I've done where it feels like I'm beating <clears throat> my head against the wall. You know, um, at some point I just get tired of it. So people aren't going to join me and do it. If, if, if you Google public enemy number one in Fox News and it's always my picture, yeah. then something's wrong with that picture. Now, when I was watching this, I couldn't, I, I found myself picturing the Larry King interview, you know, where it's like Larry King, like, Michael, are you a socialist? Like, what is your, how would you define your politics now? What I tell Larry, I forgot. No, I, I just imagined that. I have no idea if you've already answered oh. that question to him. Oh, you mean when I go on? Yeah, yeah when he, it just. Oh, wait. Are you a socialist? Yeah. I probably will just say I'm not, well, I'm heterosexual. Nice. Yeah, I'm overweight. <laughs> Blue eyes and brown hair. I don't know what I would say um, to that because I don't belong to any ideology, really. I'm a filmmaker. Yeah. My job is to take a look at what, what you know what's going on and to make movies about it. One of the things that kept me watching this was that, that in America it feels like this is there are going to be people who practically accuse you of treason. Well, that's or correct. not practically. Um, they will. Okay. Because they think it's written in the Constitution we're a capitalist country and how dare you speak against it. That's the mindset you're running into? Mm -hmm. I'm ready. The first Americans will see it in about five hours. As I sit here talking to you, no Americans have seen this movie. <laughs> oh, wow. How do you expect people are going to react? I mean, do you have any sense that this will shock people there? That this will all upset or outrage? Or Now more than ever, I think people are willing to have that discussion. Thanks to Joe the Plumber. Okay. Joe the Plumber got Obama to say that he, Obama, believed in spreading the wealth. Essentially, that's socialism. When they went all nuts on Obama, they weren't going nuts for any. For, they were they were going nuts for a reason, because they knew that that's what he believed. So, <clears throat> I think. This movie will make some people feel crazy, but I think the majority now are open to thinking about, hey, maybe there's something wrong here with the system we have. What are you proud of, stuff in terms of the work that you've done? Is there one piece that stands out? Hmm. I'm probably proudest of finding the courage on that Oscar stage to give up my moment and Kanye West myself. If someone said you could turn around tomorrow and change the world, what would you want to do? Free HBO for everybody. <laughs> Number one. It's like the only good TV. And it costs money. It should be free for everybody. Could you tell me a little bit about your relationship to Canada? Because I know that that's how one of your series got funded. What's that? My, your relationship with, with Canada? Because I mean, it's fascinating. My grandfather was Canadian. Okay. Well, I just, you know, I wish more Americans would look north and see that there are some things we can learn from you. You know, that we might be better off if we were more Canadian like in some ways. You know, not the boring, dull stuff. <laughs> okay? Yeah. But there's something about your core, your values, the way you're wired. Yeah. You believe you have, that you're your brother's keeper, that you have a responsibility, that you exist as a part of a whole. If one of you gets sick, it means that if that's not taken care of, then we all sort of suffer a bit. I think that's pretty profound. Do you have any sense of why or how that happened, where that schism comes from? I can't put my finger on it, other than to say, keep yourself on the grandfather. <laughs> and maybe sometimes the greatest change can happen that quickly, and maybe with just one person being the spark. Okay, I really so, do appreciate this. I really appreciate you making time. Thank you, man. And Thanks so much. I'm probably not supposed to do this, but here's me. Oh, are you giving this to me? Yes, please. Um, have you? Oh man, thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you very much. I love the title. Thanks.